Ready? Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this community briefing on COVID-19 and our community's local response. Joining me again is interpreter Margie Propp and thank you so much Margie for joining us today and providing your services. And thanks to all the media and residents who are tuning in to learn how you can protect yourself, your loved ones and our community. For more information on those topics, you can visit our website at covid19.lincoln.ne.gov. At that site, you'll also find out more data about the confirmed cases of COVID-19 here in Lancaster County. And you can see that at our online dashboard, which is updated twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Today in Lincoln, we have had a total of 40 individuals test positive for COVID-19. We reported earlier this morning that 17 individuals have tested positive, and since then, another 23 individuals have been diagnosed. That total number of lab confirmed cases in Lincoln now stands at 624. On Saturday, our community saw a record number of cases of COVID-19 reported on a single day when 76 positive diagnoses were recorded. Here to share more details about the Health Department's investigations of these cases is Health Department Director Pat Lopez. Good afternoon. The Health Department continues to work in the unified command structure to lead community preparedness and response planning. As this pandemic has progressed, one of the areas in which we have increased our capacity is contact tracing. We now have 27 active contact tracers. Their investigations look for any connections to previous cases and locations that may be areas of concern. So far, the largest area of concern for Lancaster County residents continues to be related to the outbreak at the Smithfield plant in Crete and neighboring Saline County. The investigations have now identified 208 Lancaster County residents who are positive cases related to the plant and uh, 128 are employees at the plant and 80 are family members or other direct contacts. The smaller Smithfield plant in Lincoln has seen one more case. 10 cases are now connected to that plant. Seven employees and three close contacts. 10 positive cases have also been traced to the Smart Chicken uh, plant in Waverly. Five are employees and five are close contacts. We are working closely to assist with additional testing with these employers. Testing is another area in which we have worked to build capacity and we have seen an increase in that as well. Over the past two weeks, ne nearly 3,500 tests have been completed. That is about half of all the local tests completed over the past two months. Brian Health and CHI Health St. Elizabeth drive through testing sites completed 630 tests from Friday through Sunday. That's 70% of our capacity. So if you have symptoms of COVID-19, you can get tested now. The process starts with an online risk assessment at chi.com or bryanhealth.com. Again, you must have an order from Brian Health or CHI St. Elizabeth or your doctor to be tested at this time. Test Nebraska is also now testing in Lincoln as well. For more information on that testing option, you can visit testnebraska.com. The increase in testing has contributed to finding additional people who have tested positive, and we have seen an increase in our positivity rate. The overall positivity rate for Lancaster County is now 9.8%, up from 8.3% a week ago. The state rate is also up from 17.3% to 18%. And our national rate has now dropped down from 18% to 17%. Today, our local hospitals report 44 COVID-19 patients. That includes 17 from Lancaster County and 27 from other parts of the state. 10 patients are on ventilators, and that includes four from Lancaster County and six from those other parts of the state. However, even with the small increase in hospitalizations and the increase in elective surgeries, our hospital capacity in Lincoln remains healthy. The increase in both contact tracing and testing are great steps forward in fighting the virus. Still, the public must continue to be our partners in preventing the spread of COVID-19. 
The new directed health measure in effect eases some of the restrictions, but we cannot afford to ease up in taking the common sense precautions to protect ourselves and others. Stay home as much as you can, wear face coverings, and wash your hands frequently. Restrictions have eased, but the threat from this virus has not. Thank you, Director Lopez. For this afternoon's briefing, we will focus on two main topics, the new directed health measures, or DHMs for short, that go into effect today, and an important new part of our local strategy for keeping our community safe for the duration of the pandemic. So let's discuss these two topics in terms of good news and bad news. First, a recap of the bad news. Our community continues to be in a high-risk situation right now. As we shared last week, two of our key metrics, our case numbers and our positivity rate, are trending in an upward direction. Because of these trends, Lincoln and Lancaster County do not meet certain of the White House Coronavirus Task Forces, the CDCs, and many local and national public health experts' key criteria for relaxing restrictions. Understanding and fully acknowledging this, Director Lopez and I sought to extend the timeline for our previous directed health measure further into May, an extension that the state flatly rejected. Yet here's the good news. Our community is listening to our local message of caution and focusing not on what they can do, but on what they should do. The majority of faith leaders in Lincoln have opted to wait to resume in-person worship services. Similarly, many conscientious private sector business leaders and restaurant and salon owners are not rushing to resume pre-pandemic operations this week. Instead, they are carefully planning and adjusting the way they run their organizations, taking into account safety precautions and developing strategies for a longer term phased in approach. They recognize that a choice between public health and the economy is a false choice. We cannot have one without the other. Additional good news is that the new DHM still maintain one of the most significant provisions designed to keep us all safe, the provision that limits public gatherings to 10 or fewer people. Our local DHM extends this provision through June 30th and also contains detailed guidance and additional requirements that the health department developed in consultation with the affected businesses, including asking restaurant workers, along with salon and body art professionals and massage therapists, to wear face coverings at work. Perhaps the most important good news that we want to share with you today is something brand new that we believe will help each of us navigate this turbulent time in which we are now living. As we come to grips with what it means to live our lives with the novel coronavirus in our midst, sometimes how we should respond is unclear. Fortunately, here in Lincoln, our unified command team from the health and fire departments worked together to develop a simple tool, the COVID risk dial. This dial will help guide us forward in the coming months, and it will provide the public with a data-driven approach that goes beyond the cold calculus of whether or not there is a ventilator or ICU bed waiting for you if you get sick. The COVID risk dial provides a visual color-coded depiction of what phase of the pandemic we are experiencing here in Lincoln and Lancaster County based on a calibration of risk factors that we are focused on locally. Each color in the COVID risk dial provides specific guidance for what you can do to stay safe, protect yourself, your family, your friends, and our community. Special guidance is included for people at risk and most vulnerable for adverse outcomes due to COVID-19. And here to explain more about the COVID risk dial and the valuable forecast it provides is Scott Holmes, who serves as Deputy Commander for Health in our Unified Command System. Thanks for being here, Scott. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I'd like to thank our team from the Health and Fire Departments and City Communications that developed the COVID risk dial. This amazing team of dedicated public servants worked nights and weekends to go from an idea to a final product in just over a week. Our goal was to create a simple tool to help our community know what actions and behaviors they can take to protect their own health and the health of everyone in the community. Many of us check the long range forecast 
to plan for what kind of weather to expect. The COVID risk dial can help you know how high the risk of COVID-19 spread is and what precautions you can take to protect your health in the coming week. The COVID risk dial will be updated every Friday. Much like weather forecasters use data from the past and modeling to forecast what the weather might be like in the next 10 days, we'll use local data to determine how high the risk of spread of COVID-19 is in our community. The main factors we will include are the risk of increased number of cases of COVID in our community, the increase or decrease in the percent of tests that are positive, the availability of testing, the ability of the health department to conduct investigations and contact tracing, the number of people hospitalized from COVID-19, the capacity of our health system, and the availability of PPE and critical medical equipment. The COVID risk dial will show the level of risk using four colors, red, orange, yellow, and green. The colors represent phases described in the Federal Guidance on Reopening America, Johns Hopkins University Guidance for Governors on Reopening States, and guidance from the Centers for Disease Control. Red represents the highest risk of COVID-19 spread in our community, and green represents the lowest. For each color of risk, we provide specific recommendations for physical distancing, face covering, hand washing, illness monitoring, and disinfection, both for outside the home, at work and in the public, and for when you are at home. So let's see how it works. When you go to the city website, the COVID risk dial will be on the front page of the COVID information page. The dial will show both last week's level and move, this, move to this week's level, showing you if the risk is going up or down. Right now, we are in orange. That means the risk of COVID-19 spread in our community is high. When you click on the Community Guidance and Recommendations tab, you will see three options, outside the home, at home, and at risk and vulnerable. If you're a person that is at risk, for example, you take a pill for high blood pressure or use an inhaler to breathe easier, have a heart condition or another health condition, or are over 65 years of age, click on the at risk and vulnerable guidance. For everyone else, choose either outside the home or at home. Let's click on outside the home to see what it tells us for what we should do when we're in the orange and the risk is high. As you can see, the guidance tells us that we should stay at home, keep six feet of distance from others, and use a face covering when outside the home and near others. Recommendations are made about frequent hand washing, illness monitoring, and disinfection. If we were in yellow or moderate risk, the guidance changes. For example, physical distancing recommendations are relaxed, advising you to consider staying at home most of the time with caution for non-essential travel and work. And if we get to green, which is our goal, it states, no distancing, resumption of normal work and community life. We hope the COVID risk dial will help be useful to you and will help each of us make informed choices on how to protect your health and the health of everyone in our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott, and to all the team at the Health Department, Fire Department, our Unified Command for developing this tool that will help us in the long haul. Um, as we have said before, this crisis is uniquely challenging. It's challenging because the situation is rapidly evolving. It's challenging because there are significant health, economic, and social considerations at stake, lives, and livelihoods. And balancing those considerations is not a black and white endeavor. And it's challenging because the hard truth in all of this is that we will be living with this virus for months, if not years. This dial provides us with a valuable compass for the long journey ahead. And the dial allows us to deliver on our commitment to you to provide you with guidance based on our available data, consistent with our values and best judgment, and consistent with our understanding of local conditions. We ask all Lincoln community members and businesses to use this as a comprehensive data-based tool that will support your continued efforts to be thoughtful, measured, and compassionate as we navigate these challenging times together. 
And before we turn to some concluding announcements, we want to acknowledge the intense feelings that people are experiencing as a result of this pandemic. Grief, frustration, fear, and fear's close cousin, anger, interspersed with brief moments of joy that come with living in the moment and the emerging clarity about what's truly important in life. Many people are scared right now, and just a couple of months ago, we were enjoying each other's company and planning for big weddings and graduations and summer fun with family and friends. And now we're connecting through video technology and trying to figure out how to know if we are asymptomatic carriers of the virus who might un unintentionally spread it to our loved ones. It's okay to feel this far-ranging experience of emotions. It's nat natural to have them, and it's part of being human during a pandemic. What we want you to know and ground yourself in is this. Public health resources and responses really matter. Our ability to scale up our testing and contact tracing matters. People taking public health recommendations seriously matters. As we continue to make progress with amassing resources and forging ahead with proven response strategies, the daily numbers eventually will come down. They will get better with time, with public health resources, and with the effort this community is more than capable of making. We're gonna get through this together, Lincoln. Before we open up for questions, we have some good news to share. First, a reminder that tomorrow is primary election day. There are now just two ways to vote. If you already have a ballot, it's too late to mail those in. You'll need to drop them off by 8 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, May 12th, at the drop box just outside the Election Commission office at 601 North 46th Street. You can also vote in person from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow. Be aware that many of the voting locations have changed. You can find your location on the Election Commissioner's website at lancaster.ne.gov. And if you are voting in person, please protect yourself and others by wearing a face covering and staying at least six feet away from others. Wash your hands or use hand sanitizer before and after voting. Voting is a responsibility of every American, and at this challenging time, we need to make sure that we exercise this responsibility in a safe manner. And finally today, it's another Sunshine Monday. We are again sharing some of the beautiful artwork created by Lincoln's children as part of the Sunshine Kids for Seniors project. Aging Partners is helping children connect with our homebound seniors by sending notes and artwork. If your family would like to participate, you may send your scanned notes and artwork with first names on them only, please, to sunshinekids at lincoln.ne.gov. And with that, we'd like to open it up for, oh, one more thing. I misstated the total number of cases earlier in my remarks. The grand total of cases in Lincoln now stands at 647. And with that, I'd be happy to open it up for questions. Hi, Mayor, this is Bill with 1011. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. I noticed you said the dial would update once a week. Uh, I was wondering um, why once a week and not every day or, or every other day. Sure. sure. We'll let Scott, we'll let Scott Holmes come Holmes. up and answer that question in more detail for you, Bill. Hi, Bill. Great question. So the dial is based on uh, pretty much two weeks or three weeks of data from the past, as well as the direction and trajectory of what our cases are doing. And so uh, rather than doing a daily update, which means every day it would be the same for a long time, we're going to be doing that weekly so that we give a picture of what's going on over a time period, not just a single day. Are there other questions from the media? Mayor, I'll ha I have one more. Sure. You said the state flatly refused to update the DHM. Can you elaborate a little bit more on those conversations? Well, I think well, I it's think clear it's from what was issued by the governor that there was a, a difference of opinion about what was appropriate for Lancaster County. Um, but we have made some minor adjustments in our DHM and we'll continue to advise the public through these briefings with what we think is the right step forward for each of us as individuals and as organizations. And this dial is our tool uh, for really communicating what we believe the forecast is for Lincoln. So, you know, whatever decision the governor or the state makes, 
the weather f report for Lincoln will be available for all of our Lincoln residents and businesses to, to look at and make informed decisions about how they proceed. Because again, this is a long-term proposition. We're going to be dealing with this for weeks and months and maybe years until there is a vaccine and better antiviral treatments available. So we believe providing this detailed information that's calibrated on a number of key criteria as outlined by Scott will really help guide us in a safe and prudent manner going forward. I have a question from Brent at Channel 8. Yes, um, yes. The COVID dashboard shows the Northwest Lincoln zip code area as having 100 plus cases, the only area like that in Lancaster County. Uh, and Director Lopez talked about why that area is harder hit than the rest of the city. That area is just an area <clears throat> where we have a higher concentration of individuals that have had some testing done. Um, and so right now it's looking like that, but you know, every day we're getting more and more tests in and more testing done. And so we've tried to focus on certain areas across the community and areas where individuals um, may have been exposed differently. So that's what I know about the Northwest Lincoln area, and we'll, I'll look at that again more closely. But that's a large area, if you look at it. I can't remember all the street boundaries on that right now. We have a question from Lynn Fisher at KCUM. Is there a level of new cases that would trigger a reversal of the level of health directive? I think, I think the level, level of new cases that would uh, result in a reversal would be based on those other findings too about what our healthcare capacity is in the community, our positivity rate, our ability to do contact tracing and follow up with individuals um, in a timely manner. So there isn't an exact level where that is. It would be taking into consideration all of those factors. Yeah, and just to follow up with Pat, I mean, we certainly want to stay out of the red, red zone. zone. That's the most high risk zone for community spread. So we'll be closely monitoring our status and reporting that out uh, and providing the best guidance that we can on the local level using this tool. Any other Any questions? Other questions? One more follow up, Mayor. Sure. The governor mentioned today the uh, loosening of restrictions for youth sports and so forth starting on June 1st. Uh, I was wondering if you had any advice for uh, something that will certainly impact a lot of Lincoln families. Well, um, I'll bring Director Lopez up in just a second, but I guess what I would say is that I've only just seen those guidelines that were uh, issued today and uh, we'll be reviewing them very carefully. As you can tell from our DHM, we have the limit on public gatherings uh, to 10 or fewer people in place through June 30th as a signal of how serious we think our situation is and the kind of caution we want people to use. And we certainly want to keep all of our residents safe and especially the youngest among us. And with that, I'll bring up um, Pat Lopez. I think the mayor actually covered everything uh, really quite well. Uh, as she said, we've just received those final recommendations just prior to being here. So we're gonna look those over, but we are gonna keep into consideration the, uh, you know, the social, the ability to physically distance and where we're at in our community at the current time with um, our number of cases and our positivity rate. standard baseball game that we're told can resume on June 18th, you know, at minimum you have 18 players and two coaches, that's 20 people. So would that violate the, the social distancing gathering rules as you see them? You know, you know we, we haven't have really, as I said, I actually just got these, um, 
they were released to us in the final format. So we have to look at them because it also, we need to take into consideration, yes, it would be more than that, but uh, what are the requirements for social distancing? I know there are some here, some related to the dugout, where the players can stand, how people can be around. Um, there are other areas, and we're talking about being outside too. So we need to keep that into consideration. That's why I said I think we need to have just a little bit of time to be able to review these more clearly to give you a, a really good answer on some of those questions. Understand. Thank you. And you know, Bill, I guess just, just as a mom, I've been trying to prepare my own children for a summer that doesn't look or feel like past summers. You know, this is going to be a, a summer for heroic sacrifice. We're really asking people to mask up more than we're asking them to suit up. Any other, Any questions? other questions? Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for all you're doing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We'll be back tomorrow at 3.30 with the latest report. Take care.